Hey kid, you want some economy? Hi, my name is Rokas and today what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and incorporate a little bit of economy into your games. Now, why would you even want to have more economy in your games? I think it's a great tool to have if you're a DM and uh, you want to have more realistic and more grounded game. Well, to preface, I run a game where not only my players evolve with, uh, with, with the time, but also the world around them. And I think having a little bit of economy principles in your game can actually help you not only have that but also have this kind of a tool that actually helps you to create more interesting plot hooks and even more interesting characters uh, so stay tuned and uh, let's let's try and, and do that So the power die system is actually pretty easy to understand. So basically you have five dices ranging up from 1d4 to 1d12. And in between you have 1d6, 1d8 and 1d10. And what that is, is actually dices that actually gives your NPCs uh, indication of what kind of power they have and what kind of result they can yield on, on the world. So what I do is I give one of my you know NPCs a specific type of power die level so for instance if we have a tavern keeper he's probably gonna have like 1d4 of, of results that he can yield on the world while having a thieves guild that is pretty much established could have like 1d10 maybe 1d8 after the session is done what i do then is i give all of my npcs a turn in which they could do something at that point noticeable npcs such as guild leaders merchants villains and you know factions and all that kind of stuff can make some kind of a turn which means they could like sell stuff they could recruit people into their parties they can produce stuff they can attack somebody they can do whatever they want basically it's a moment where they will go after some resources maybe some magical items i will rule for him to do something like that could advance his position or potentially diminish it so i roll d20 and then i roll uh, associated power die that this person has and that determines some of the results that he could yield or lose so for instance let's take a simple merchant that you know has power level one and he has a 1d4 power level and after the session is done we roll 1d20 and what happens then is that we roll our power die and let's see if he's successful like you know rolls 15 or something like that and he rolls you know four so we can say that he earns about 40 gold pieces per one session and why does that matter well it matters that if you accumulate the necessary amount to upgrade to level two you upgrade not only your you know power dice level but also you will get the same amount of dice from another member because a noticeable member joins your guild and that is the whole reason why you have more power quote unquote so basically now your power cap which is you know four uh, can grow up to 12 and then it goes up to you know 24 40 and 60 which i think is a pretty okay progression and also it's quite simple And uh, for instance, if we have a guild that, you know, there's a thieves guild that is actually level four and you have like four noticeable members that could do the maximum of like 40, uh, you know, re results in, in the city, you can actually feel the influence and the presence that of that in the town. And, you know, if everything is successful and the thieves guild is running rampant, uh, you'll find, you know, rumors, you will find some justifications why the city city is the way it is and you know if your party decides to you know eliminate one of the leaders or something like that what happens then is uh, if the guild actually loses this noticeable member your power level die just drops down and now instead of having 40 you know like uh, lackeys that do the bad things for you now you only have 20 four i think so now it's more manageable to actually take them down and if you do that again you know maybe the, the thieves guild will scatter maybe they will join another faction and try to survive in some kind of other ways so it just makes this kind of a fluid storytelling that is actually pretty interesting 
and uh, you can make it in a way that you want to but uh, I think it's interesting to have this kind of way where you just not having the story that actually you want but you give the the story a chance to actually develop in such a way that you have not expected yourself but if with any you know success or failure what you do is you need to justify what happens for that NPC villain or even kingdoms but what's important here is that actually a simple merchant after some time maybe in the end of this campaign can become an influential you know some kind of a council leader or something like that and I like that idea of progression and what happens then you know that if the party was pretty mean to this kind of a simple merchant at the start of the campaign now he can become like some kind of a villain so I like that kind of a diversity of story where a simple thing can grow into you know a formidable foe you have a NPC that is actually so weak that actually can persevere and make something out of himself. So in Means of Kingdoms, what I do personally is I do bigger dice rolls. So for instance, a kingdom could have the hundred dice to it. And you know, they could, you know, roll and have like maybe a thousand gold at best. But also what you can have is you can invent some of the boons that are not active. So for instance, there's an abandoned mine and the king would say, well, I have like 500 gold and what I could do is I cannot build one, but I can spend that money as, as a way where it becomes a quest where this uh, party just goes and cleans the, the, the whole mine and afterwards the kingdom has another d100 dice to it. I know it's a little bit gamey but it's still pretty interesting thing to have because your players actually will feel the consequences and also will feel that they actually done something good with the world that has an effect on every single thing that they encounter in that place. The whole idea is that if you have kingdoms and all that kind of stuff what happens if now you have a kingdom that is actually it has great you know mines all that kind of resources and another you know kingdom that has a lot of you know army, army wants that resources you know now we have a war between those factions and now there's another story plot hook and you will not think of them as uh, you know you will not think of them at the first time that you're just preparing something and now we have a world that is actually organically moving doing something and that's why I like about you know having this kind of a system which doesn't really only depend on you you just just need to give the justifications why the thing happens. In means of production, what I like to do is after I give some of the boons to my kingdom, uh, for instance, if the party is actually liberates a uh, abandoned mine or something like that, an iron mine or something along those lines, what happens then, you know, is that the smithies could have, you know, cheaper materials to create some of the items. And I think that makes it a little bit more interesting. And at this point, when you have better production at the kingdom, what happens then is that you are Players can actually just buy some stuff and sell it to other uh, kingdoms at a higher price. I know it's just a simple uh, example but this is how you can actually incorporate the production into your games and make it a little bit more interesting. You can make some of the merchants have some kind of a feats like for instance an alchemist can create potions you know half of the price that will after each session you know they can try and create you know health potions or something like that which can even be better results and your players can actually buy those potions not only that you know alchemists could say that you know they need some kind of a rare ingredients like you know troll hearts or something like that to increase their capabilities and also unlock some of the better items for your party so it's not only a progression for you know an NPC but also for your party to have as resources so I think that's a pretty interesting idea to have in your game for what it's worth uh, I know that this could seem like it's unnecessary preparation and I don't want to have you making all of these things up just because you just like world building and that's it. I see this uh, as a tool that you can actually just use for your games to enhance your story and to find some plot hooks that you would not think of them you know otherwise. It's not just only for over preparing it's 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 just a tool that you can use to enhance your story and that's what's important about it. So so I hope you like this video and if you do consider giving a like and subscription and probably sharing this with people that actually would enjoy this sort of content. Now if you want to have more videos like these uh, you can comment down below uh, that really helps me 
uh, to know whether or not you like this sort of content and whether or not you would actually want to see more content like this. So, you know, do that and uh, I bid you farewell uh, and next week we're gonna do something else. So yeah, bye bye. Have a great week.